We've all read the Harvard Business Review article, Data Science, the Sexiest Job of the 21st Century. The authors actually released that article about 10 years ago and have now released a 10-year look back, taking into account what the modern data industry looks like with all the developments we've made in the last 10 years. In that article, about halfway down, they say, The assumption in 2012 was that data scientists could do all the required tasks in data science application, from conceptualizing the use case, to interfacing with business and technology stakeholders, to developing the algorithm and deploying it into production. Now, however, there's been a proliferation of related jobs to handle many of those tasks, including machine learning engineer, data engineer, AI specialist, analytics and AI translators, and data-oriented product managers. LinkedIn reported that some of these jobs as being more popular than data scientists in its Jobs on the Rise reports for 2021 and 2022 in the U.S. Basically, in the last few years, companies have realized that if you throw all the work of an actual data project onto the data scientists, they get really bogged down in the data cleaning and data preparation steps of that process. And that's where the rise of the data engineer came into effect. A data engineer is a software engineer whose primary job is to make sure that data is warehoused correctly, stored correctly, is ported in correctly, and made clean and ready for data scientists and data analysts to analyze said data. They do this using various tools, from SQL to Python to Java-based languages. So let's say you want to become a data engineer. What do you do? I myself started off as a data analyst, and I made sure that my coding skills were up to snuff, and I made sure that I was doing a lot of coding in my job. That way, when a job opportunity opened up, when an interview opportunity opened up for me to interview as a data engineer, I was ready to take advantage of that opportunity. The path I want to talk to you about today is the Meta Database Engineer Professional Certificate by Coursera. To be very clear, this video is both sponsored by Coursera and not all of the courses in the certification are available right now. Some of them will be available as late as January 2nd, 2023. But with three courses available today and with two more becoming available in about two weeks on September 19th, there's more than enough content for you to get started and to have enough content to go until the January 2nd courses become available. So you guys know my channel is not just some theoretical channel. It is committed to helping you guys get jobs. So to that extent, I'm very happy that Meta actually has a job board specifically created for people who graduate with this certification and the other professional certifications that they have. According to Meta themselves, Meta is committed to helping certificate holders get hired. Upon earning a Meta certificate, learners will get access to the Meta Career Programs Job Board, which is a job search platform with 200 plus employers who have committed to sourcing talent through Meta certificate programs. Currently, it seems like a lot of the jobs available are more for front-end web devs and for people who have graduated from the other meta certification courses, but I expect more data engineering jobs will become available as the certificate goes fully live by January 2nd. So now let's go through the actual course material and I'll comment on what I think about it as a practicing data engineer, what I think could be added and what I think they did well, and you can make a decision as to whether this certification course is the right one for you. There are a couple of core skills you'll want to focus on in order to become a data engineer. These include SQL, Python, JVM-based languages, Bash, and cloud services. In this course, you will learn how to query data really well using SQL, like a data analyst or a data scientist using something called DQL or data querying language. And you'll also learn how to model uh, both data warehouses and actually insert data into databases using something called DML or DDL, data modeling language, and I think it's data uh, definition language, like a data engineer would. Both of these SQL skills are very important to have in order to become a data engineer. SQL and best SQL practices are covered in courses 1, 3, 4, 6, and 7. I'm really glad that the course spends so much time on SQL because SQL is probably the most used technical skill for any data engineer. And the great thing about SQL is even if you don't use it, if you decide not to become a data engineer, the skill itself is very useful even for people who decide to work in business or as a software developer or as a data analyst or data scientist. One of the most important skills that a data engineer can develop in order to increase their uh, pay and their desirability on the job market is the ability to program. And when I say program, I mean using it, uh, programming using a language like Python. Programming allows you to do more complex data manipulations and use distributed computing frameworks in order to process large amounts of data. It also allows you to build out data pipelines and create bespoke data apps for your data scientists and your data analysts. And so I'm glad that they are using an introduction to Python programming course in this because Python is now a first class citizen in the world of data engineering. Because of things like PySpark, you can now use Python to do a lot of the work that could only be done with JVM. 
JVM languages in the past. Speaking of JVM, JVM or Java Virtual Machine refers to the actual virtual machine that runs Java-based code. So Java is a programming language, and a lot of the distributed computing systems in data engineering have a Java backend to them, specifically Scala-based. Learning Java is not something that I would expect out of a entry-level data engineer, and it is not covered in this course. So I will say that is one thing this course does not cover. I'm actually kind of glad that they don't, though, because the combination, let's say you're completely brand new, and this course is built for people who have no experience at all, right? Um, learning SQL and then Python uh, and then Java is a really tall ask for someone to do. And so I think that the better way to go about it anyways is to learn Python and SQL um, and you know a couple of other technical skills and then get a job. And then while you're in your job, learn how to use Java. Especially because uh, unlike you know a couple of years ago when PySpark or Python was a second class citizen in the world of data engineering, today Python is very much a first class citizen and can be used in a lot of the distributed computing frameworks. So just to reiterate, what I would suggest is uh, uh, going ahead and picking up Java or Scala after you have your first job as a data engineer. And you might find out that it's something that you don't even need to learn by that time. So while they don't have it in this course, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because it might just create too much stuff for people to learn, honestly. Bash stands for born again shell and basically refers to the scripting language that you use in order to access your terminal or your command prompt. Uh, the terminal or command prompt is just how you interact with computers using commands instead of using the graphical user interface. And this is important for data engineers to know because oftentimes you'll be interfacing with cloud, um, with either databases or with like cloud services. And a lot of those services use terminals in order to, you know, interact with you. It's usually the fastest way to get things done in uh, many computing systems. So they teach this in course two when you're learning Git. One thing I'm really glad that they do is that the, uh, so course two where you're learning Git and the uh, command line, uh, they don't spend too much time on it. Based on the length of the course, it looks like you could, you know, knock that one out in a weekend, honestly, uh, because while it looks very complicated, the terminal is generally quite easy to use and quite easy to learn. So um, I'm glad they don't spend too much time on it. One thing I will say that I think this course actually is missing is an overview of cloud services. So cloud services talks about things like AWS, GCP, Azure, um, you know, those basically like running stuff in the cloud. So if you're going to become a data engineer in the modern market, a lot of businesses are moving a lot of their uh, stuff, a lot of their data, a lot of their data warehousing, their databases into the cloud. And a lot of the coolest tools that data scientists use today, like Databricks, for example, um, a lot of them are cloud-based. This course, as far as I can tell, does not cover uh, even an introduction into cloud services. So if you were to take this certification, I would recommend also doing a quick introduction into cloud services, learn things like how Amazon SW or S3 works, um, EC2 instances, and like Redshift, basic databasing, or the equivalent Azure services, or the equivalent GCP services, if I were you. So I would say that's probably the only technical skills or set of technical skills that this course doesn't cover that I wish it covers. I can kind of understand why they didn't do that. Um, cloud services are changing so quickly every single year. Um, the, the joke is that every single year AWS releases, you know, a hundred new services that no one's ever going to use again. Um, and because of that, like, it looks like they were really trying to go for a course that could stand the test of time and would be useful even, you know, five, six, 10 years down the line. So a lot of the skills they teach over here will probably be useful even like 10 years down the line. Um, but cloud services change so often. I can see why they didn't, uh, actually introduce that into the course, but it is something I would recommend you learn on the side after you finish the certification, if you're interested. Overall, outside of cloud technologies, I believe that this course actually, this certification actually does go over the most important aspects of the data engineering world that you need in order to actually become a entry-level data engineer. And I need to reiterate an entry-level data engineer. There is obviously a lot more, um, like if you if you went and showed this to a professional data engineer, they might say, oh, there's so much more that you need to know. You know, I'm like, maybe you should know a JVM language. But I think that making a good course is about striking that balance between providing enough content for people to feel like they're learning a lot um, and to actually learn a lot, but not teaching them so much that um, they don't actually complete the course. I would not be surprised if a lot of these courses just don't have great completion rates because a lot of people pick stuff up and just immediately drop it. So um, I think they struck a pretty decent balance. I wish there was an introduction into cloud technologies, but you know, you can always pick up that stuff on the side and I'll probably release the video on this channel where you can learn that as well. So I need to be very clear. Outside of the jobs on the job board and the 200 plus companies that have committed to sourcing talent from these, uh, from the certificate holders in this Coursera course, a certification is not something that most companies really care about in the industry of data engineering, data science, or data analytics. An exception does need to be made for like the AWS certifications, the GCP certifications, and the Azure certifications given out by their respective companies. Unlike a lot of other people though, I don't believe certifications are useless. I think they serve one of two major purposes. One is that you do get access to the meta job board, which at as far as we can tell, Meta has committed to helping 
ensure that their certificate holders do hold a competitive advantage in actually getting a job using the certificate on their job board. And two, a certificate is a very concrete achievement, and it is an achievement in my opinion, but it's a very concrete uh, objective or achievement for you to strive for in order to actually finish a course. I would not be surprised if most courses, most online courses, um, even if they are completely free, have lower than 10% completion rates. I actually have a video, and I, I have quite a few videos, where um, I provide the code for people in order to actually like code along with me, right? Coding is not a spectator sport. You need to code a lot. Like you need to be typing out stuff in order to understand what's going on. And I can tell you for a fact that of the number of views I get on those videos, fewer than 1% of people actually ever download the code. I have a tracker so I can determine, like I can see how many people have actually like even clicked on the link. And it's fewer than 1%. Most people um, passively watch courses and don't actually uh, commit to learning the materials inside the courses. A certification can help ensure that you do commit to that. For me personally, I have a Google TensorFlow certification, and while the certification itself did not help me get a job, it did force me to learn the skills to where I can confidently say I do know Google TensorFlow right now. One really cool thing about Coursera is that they allow you to audit their course for free. Auditing a course, just like in college, means that you get to get all of the learning materials, but you don't get to do the actual assignments and you don't get the certification. But you can do all of the learning materials, the videos and stuff, for free. Uh, and so I highly recommend trying this out prior to actually buying the course. If you want to buy the course, you can buy the certification for 49 US dollars, or you can buy it on Coursera Plus, where you get access to this course along with 7,000 other courses, including the excellent Google Data Analyst Certification course for $59 a month, or $3.99 a year. Coursera will be running a promotion very soon, link in the description below with some details, that will allow you to get the subscription for Coursera Plus for $2.99 instead of the normal $3.99 per year. I do highly recommend checking out the uh, course through an audit first, but if you are so interested in checking out the course, please use the link in the description below as I get a small commission for that and it doesn't cost you any extra and it's a great way to support the channel. Also, if you live in cities like New York, then the uh, Department of Learning sometimes has a, a deal with Coursera where they will help fund your learning for free, um, especially if you're unemployed. So make sure in, uh, that your city or state government uh, doesn't have a benefit for you to use Coursera because Coursera does team up with a lot of cities and states to help offer their resources, like the actual certification, for free. If you are interested in doing the certification, feel free to click on my link in the description below. It is an affiliate link. I do get a small commission off of it. Um, it does not raise the price on you at all. It's just a way to support the channel and show um, sponsors like Coursera, who thank you so much for sponsoring this channel, that uh, my channel is a great way for helping people, uh, helping people discover new ways that they can learn. Thank you guys so much for joining the channel today, and I hope you have a good day.